All right, this time we're going to find the derivative of y with respect to x. And our equation has x's and y's in it, which is my hint to go down the path of implicit differentiation. So um, of all of this, of this term, this term, and this term, and this term, this one's probably the one that takes a little bit longer to wrap your head around. Um, so let me kind of split it up like I did in the last question. This is x times e to the y. So if I want to take the derivative of this, I have to use the product rule. So I have to say I'll take the derivative of x. So that makes this um, the derivative of x with respect to x. So if I bring the power down, lower the power by 1, this becomes 1 times the other stuff. And that is that was taking the derivative of x with respect to x plus then I'll take the derivative of this and the derivative of e to the y would be e to the y times the first term and in this case because I took the derivative of y with respect to x that gives me a dy dx and that is going to be needed and that's exactly what I'm going to be solving for here in a minute. Okay, so all of this becomes all of that, just the product rule. Derivative of this times this and then derivative of that times that. Okay, take the derivative of this with respect to x, we get negative 10. Take the derivative of this with respect to x, we would get 3 and that time I took the derivative of y with respect to x. And the derivative of 0 is just 0. So anything that doesn't have a dy dx can be added or subtracted over to the other side. So I need to subtract over an e to the y and add over a 10. And a pretty common theme, you're starting to see that now everything over here has a dy dx. So I can factor out a dy dx, like a GCF. Because if I have this times this, I can get rid of all of this from the left side with division. As long as I keep my equation balanced and also divide the other side. So in the end, the derivative of y, or y prime if you'd rather, was a negative e to the y plus 10 all over x times e to the y plus 3.